The significance is twofold. One is that they are spying very aggressively on their own allies under the guise of inviting them to an economic summit. But I think the much bigger part of the story is it shows just how sophisticated and deceitful the eavesdropping capabilities are of Western governments and, of, and specifically of, of their intelligence and surveillance agencies. And so this is what I think is really the critical aspect of all of these stories, which is there are these extremely invasive uh, capabilities being assembled by these governments that allow all kinds of deceitful spying, obviously ones that even trick the Russian government and, and the, the, the efforts to protect themselves from, from spying. And we ought to have, as part of our debate, an understanding of what these capabilities are so that we can have a, a real discussion about the kind of limits that should be imposed on them. So that's always what happens is when these spying agencies create these capabilities, in the first instance, they direct them at other governments, they direct them at hostile countries, but they always end up creeping further and further toward domestic surveillance. And we ought to know what these capabilities are so that we can anticipate them and plan for them and talk about ways to, to limit them and prevent abuse. Well, Glenn, I've read some criticism of Snowden uh, and your reporting, uh, drawing a distinction between uh, uh, exposing domestic surveillance and then blowing the whistle on foreign espionage, saying that they're separate and that, in fact, uh, talking about programs like this, this uh, one that was uncovered in Britain, spying on foreign leaders, distracts from the issue of domestic spying. So I think there's a continuum here. You know, the journalistic uh, inquiry is, is there a significant public interest and does it outweigh whatever harm you might cause? And so on the continuum of what's in the public interest, I think that at the very top end of that spectrum in terms of public interest is when uh, a government engages in massive surveillance on its own citizens without suspicion or evidence of wrongdoing, which is what most of our stories have focused on. I think after that comes when the governments of the United States and its allies are spying on citizens of the world without suspicion. There is a huge loss to privacy, internet freedom, liberty, when the NSA spies on innocent people who aren't Americans, who live in other countries as well. Um, and then I think at the far end of that continuum on the other spectrum is when uh, governments spy on other governments. So I agree that the, the public interest there is, is less than it is when the NSA spies domestically, but it's not non-existent. As I said, we need to know what these capabilities are so that we can act before they start being applied domestically. But the vast bulk of our stories have been and will continue to be um, stories about how the NSA directs its surveillance at uh, Americans and citizens around the world indiscriminately without any evidence of wrongdoing, what Mr. Snowden yesterday called the largest suspicionless surveillance program ever created in human history. So let's go to what President Obama said in the Charlie Rose interview, um, when he said he could say unequivocally um, that we're not listening to your phone calls. Um, the NS it says the NSA cannot listen to your phone calls, Obama said. The NSA cannot target your emails and have not unless they get a subpoena. Um, uh, can you talk about that? I'm staggered by how deceitful and misleading that claim is from President Obama. It's actually worse than just misleading and deceitful. It's just outright false. And this is the story that we're working on to publish next, which is an inside look at what the FISA court really does in terms of what is called oversight, but is really an empty fig leaf um, when it monitors the NSA. Under the 2008 FISA law, um, which replaced the 30-year FISA law enacted in 1978, the principal change is that the United States no longer needs an individual warrant when it listens in on the telephone calls or reads the emails of American citizens when they communicate with people outside of the United States. It is true that when American citizens talk to other Americans on U.S. soil, exclusively domestic communications, the NSA legally is required to get an individualized warrant from the FISA court before they can listen to the content of, of those communications. But when an American citizen is talking to somebody outside of the United States who's not a U.S. citizen, and the target of those communications is the person outside of the United States, that is now completely legal for the NSA to eavesdrop on that call or read the email um, without going and getting a warrant. That is the whole point of that 2008 law. The, remember, the Bush administration in 2005 got caught 
eavesdropping on the conversations of American citizens, the international conversations of American citizens, without a warrant. And what that 2008 law did is legalize that Bush program by eliminating the warrant requirement. And so every six months, the NSA goes to the FISA court and they say, here are the procedures that we use for determining who is and is not a U.S. citizen, who is and is not on U.S. soil. The FISA court stamps the uh, an approval stamp on those guidelines. And the NSA is then empowered to go around collecting whatever calls and whatever emails they want. They can force the telecoms and the internet providers to give them whatever content they want, which often includes American citizens talking to these foreign targets without any kind of a search warrant. So when President Obama says, nobody's listening to your calls or reading your emails without first getting a search warrant, that is absolutely false. It is true that the NSA can't deliberately target, deliberately target U.S. citizens for that kind of surveillance, but it is also the case that they are frequently engaging in surveillance of exactly that kind of invasive technique involving U.S. persons. Let me just say one last thing. This is why, and just go to Google and, and read about this, Ron Wyden and Mark Udall, two Democrats on the Intelligence Committee, have been repeatedly asking the NSA, how many Americans' telephone calls and emails are you intercepting without warrants under this program? And the NSA continuously tells them, I'm sorry, we can't provide you with even a rough estimate. We don't have the technical capabilities to do that. It would take too much time and distract away from our core mission for us to assemble those statistics. So this idea that President Obama is promoting that the NSA never listens to Americans' calls or reads their emails without warrants is utterly false.